Good morning, friends. Good morning and welcome to those who have gathered together here in this building. Um, even though we are socially distant, we can see one another's faces, and that's good. But for those who are not able to see our faces, who will be watching this a little later or at any time, we pray that you would experience God's presence with us and feel a part of God's community of faith that doesn't know anything about the boundaries of walls, because God's presence is everywhere. And so a warm welcome to all those who are participating in whatever way. We've been lighting our Advent candles um, for the last couple of weeks, and so each Sunday in Advent, we light a, another candle as we anticipate the light of the world that grows stronger and stronger through Christ's presence amongst us. And our nativity is also ongoing. And so the first week, uh, the angel appeared to Mary. Last week, the angel appeared to Joseph. And this week, Mary and Joseph are on their way to Bethlehem. And the shepherds are in the fields watching over their flocks and we are getting nearer and nearer to that moment when we celebrate the birth of Christ, the hope of our world, our salvation here and now. And so as we light the Advent candles, uh, Raylan Thompson and family will be doing the reading and the prayer for us. And so um, that we will listen to their voices as we light the candle. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of peace. We lit it and the candle of hope again as we remember that Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, will come again to judge the world um, and bring it everlasting peace. The third candle of Advent is the candle of joy. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, she was filled with joy. She sang a song that began with the words, My soul magnifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. Just as the birth of Jesus gave great joy to his mother, so his presence to the world gave joy to those who had none before. He healed them and gave them hope and peace when they believed in him. From hope, peace and love grows joy. We light the candle of joy to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have joy and that through him there will be everlasting joy on earth. Joy is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the joy we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the joy you give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word and to do your will by sharing your joy with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. And then we listen to the first three verses of our special Advent song. A candle is burning, a flame warm and bright, a candle of hope in the darkness of life, while angels sing blessings from heaven's starry sky. Our hearts we prepare now for Jesus is nigh. A candle is burning, a candle of peace, a candle to signal that conflict must cease. For Jesus is coming to show us the way. A message of peace humbly laid on the hay. A candle is burning, a candle of joy, a candle to welcome brave Mary's new boy. Our hearts fill with wonder, our eyes become bright. As joy like the summer brings sunshine and light. You may have noticed that the third candle that we light is a different color from the other two, the, the, or the other three. 
the three purple candles uh, remind us of, of Christ the King, but also of, of our own weaknesses. But on this Sunday, we celebrate and rejoice. And so the third candle is, is different from the others, is pink, and it, because this is called Gaudete Sunday, which is the Latin for rejoice. And so we'll be focusing on joy, and you'll see more of that and hear more of that word as we go. Let's pray together. God of light and grace, who calls us to trust, shine in our hearts with all the joy of your coming sun. At the edge of our awareness is a tingling sense of expectation, thankfully not limited to the confines of, of a building. In the depths of our being is a yearning that rouses like a sleeper awakening, and it finds its answer in God with us, Emmanuel. God of joy who calls us to sing, we look for a renewed awareness, a deeper yearning, and a more complete presence in our lives. Deliver us from trusting the bright lights of our time and from the glitter of distraction. Bring us into the light where we can see you with wonder and openness. Help us come clean with you. Help us come clean with you, God, and place our hope in your hands. If in the light of Advent joy we see we have lived pushing happiness away, as if Christ had never come weaving parables of grace and with actions of loving compassion, Lord, forgive us. If in the light of Advent hope we see we have lived as if Jesus' coming has been relegated to history, leaving behind his coming to us now in the midst of our sorrows and the happiness of our experience, Lord, forgive us. If in the light of Advent clarity we see we have sometimes lived dutiful lives, but grimly as if Christ has not come in glory as the fulfillment of grace and truth, holy God, forgive us. Forgive us the times we fail to be practical in faith, adventurous in hope, and generous in love. Forgive the discouragement we have caused others and the misery we serve on ourselves. Restore us again in joy. So whole in spirit, we live with profound trust and joyful devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be glad then as we hear the transforming words of good news in Christ. We are made new, made whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so we listen to the beautiful hymn based on Mary's song of praise as she discovers that she's going to give birth to the Savior of the world. Tell out my soul. And if you'd like to sing along with it, behind your masks, you're welcome to do that. Let's listen to these words.
Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 4 and verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Thanks be to God for these words to us. Now, I guess that some people look at this passage and see only the words rejoice always and think to themselves, that's just impossible. How can you always be shiny, happy people? It doesn't make sense. But I don't think that's what this passage means. And if we look again, we see that it's not simply rejoice always, it's rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And then later on it says, the Lord is near. The joy is not some superficial happiness. It is, as the passage speaks about a little bit later on, the peace of God that passes all understanding. We cannot understand the pain and the suffering of the world that we live in, but we can receive in Christ the peace that God gives us that passes all understanding. The, the joy that we experience is the knowledge that God is with us. God is near. Rejoice in Christ. God is with us in the midst of all of life's circumstances. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. And God's strength comforts us guides us, leads us through the darkness to the richness of life that awaits us on the other side of the valley. Henry Nowen, one of my favorite authors, puts it so beautifully this way. He writes, joy is not the same as happiness. We can be unhappy about many things, but joy can still be there because it comes from the knowledge of God's love for us. We are inclined to think that when we are sad, we cannot be glad. But in the life of a God-centered person, sorrow and joy can exist together. That isn't easy to understand, but when we think about some of our deepest life experiences, such as being present at the birth of a child or the death of a friend, Great sorrow and great joy are often seen to be parts of the same experience. Often we discover the joy in the midst of the sorrow. I remember the most painful times of my life as times when I became aware of a spiritual reality much larger than myself. A reality that allowed me to live the pain with hope. I dare even to say, my grief was a place where I found joy. Still, nothing happens automatically in the spiritual life. Joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. That's why I think it says rejoice in the Lord always. It's a choice based on the knowledge that we belong to God and have found in God a refuge 
and a safety that nothing, not even death, can take away from us. Joy is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. I'm going to read that last line again. Joy is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. We have to choose joy. And that's where the second part of today's reading comes in, I believe. In verse 8, we read, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. You see, we can choose to focus on all the pain and the suffering that surrounds us, or we can choose to acknowledge that in the midst of all the suffering that surrounds us, God is with us. And we can choose to focus instead on what is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable. We need to remember that, that Paul writes these words from a prison cell. He's under threat of death, and yet he remains centered through an openness to God's presence in the midst of his awful circumstances. And, and he remains centered in that openness to God's presence through prayer. And that's why he says, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I know that sometimes life can be overwhelming. In those moments, we need more than ever to remind ourselves that God is with us. And in those moments in particular, we need to focus on what is true and honorable, just, pure, pleasing, and commendable. We need to find something to be grateful for. If there is anything worthy of praise, think about it. At one of the most difficult times of my own personal life, after my dad took his own life and sent us all into complete turmoil, I didn't think I would ever be able to, to see life again. Certainly didn't see life in the same way again, but didn't think I'd ever be able to experience peace and joy in the midst of the turmoil of, of that time. And in that moment, I read some words that helped me to change the focus of my thoughts. And, and the words that I read are, if you can't thank God for what you've received, thank God for what you've been spared. If you can't thank God for the experiences of your life right now, thank God for the experiences that you might have been spared. When I look around in the world that we live in, I recognize that there are a lot of things that I can be grateful for. There, there's a lot that, could have, that I could have experienced that I haven't. And so I, I, can't thank, I couldn't in that moment give thanks and praise to God for, for the awful events that had happened that led up to my dad taking his own life. But I could give thanks that I was surrounded by family and friends who supported me. People who understood me, I was in a place where I could receive the counseling I needed in order to try to make sense of that which didn't make sense. And so if you can't thank God for what you've received, thank God for what you've been spared. If there is anything worthy of praise, think about it. Think about uh, uh, focus on, on those things, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, just, pure, pleasing, and commendable, whatever is excellent. I realized that I can be grateful that even when 
life threatens to overwhelm me, God is with me. There's a beautiful prophecy written in a time when Israel was divided. It was under threat from outside forces. It was recovering barely from a very harsh regime. A time that was very difficult for the people of Israel to find any joy. And into the midst of those really difficult circumstances, the prophet Zephaniah speaks these words from Zephaniah 3, verses 14 to 18. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation because it's quite a difficult passage to translate. And I found some translations just don't capture it. But this particular version, the New Living Translation, captured it so beautifully. Zephaniah 3, 14 to 18. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. For the Lord will remove his hand of judgment and will disperse the armies of your enemy. And the Lord himself, the King of Israel, will live among you. At last your troubles will be over and you will never again fear disaster. On that day, the announcement to Jerusalem will be, Cheer up, Zion, don't be afraid, for the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. Another, another translation is, he will renew you with his love. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. I will gather you who mourned for the appointed festivals. You will be disgraced no more. Rejoice, the Lord is near, living among you. That is the, the, the promise given through the prophet Zephaniah. And we see it come true in Christ. God with us. And so Paul is able later to write similar things. Rejoice, the Lord is near. Now we need to remember that these words, in particular the, the promise made to, to Israel, weren't, weren't written, this promise wasn't given to saints, to people who had their lives all sorted out. They weren't written to people who had done everything wrong. In fact, these words are spoken to people who have failed God deeply, failed to live as God intends. Up until this moment, all that Zephaniah has spoken about is the evil that they have done and the judgment that they will incur. But then there's this promise that God doesn't judge us based on what we do but on who we are as the beloved children of God. And that's why Henry Nolan is able to say that that's where our joy comes from, a knowledge that we are created by God and loved by God. And so in verses 17 and 18 uh, it's of, of that passage of Zephaniah, it says, the Lord is living among you. He's a mighty savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. Now imagine if you're just coming through a very difficult time in the nation and, and you, you know you've just been told all the bad things you've done and then you hear the Lord is living among you. He's a mighty savior. He'll take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears or he will renew you with his love. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. And then the promise of God, I will gather you who mourn for the appointed festivals. You will be disgraced no more. You see, God doesn't leave us in the mess and the muck of our lives. Whether it's caused by ourselves or whether it's caused by external circumstances or by others, God doesn't leave us there. God is with us and God rejoices over us because God loves us. I love that, that passage, uh, that, that verse 
where it says, and, and this is where I find this translation in particular gets it right. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. Can you imagine God rejoicing over you with joyful songs? But it gets even better because when you dig a little bit deeper into the meaning of the Hebrew that's translated there, the word that's translated, he will rejoice over you, the word rejoice, it literally speaks about spinning around under the influence of violent emotion. Spinning around as if under the influence of a violent emotion. Can you imagine God spinning around as if under the influence of a violent emotion? Violent is maybe the wrong word, but a, a, a great emotion. There's a lot of emotion expressed in that, in that word. And, and, and then it says, rejoice over you with joyful songs. And that, that word, joyful songs, is, is a ringing cry. The, the closest I could come to, to think of understanding that is you, 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 ululating. I don't even know how you say it, but you know that, you know, in, in African tradition, they are, yeah, I don't know if I did that right, but anyway, it's, it's now recorded for all eternity on, on the internet. Um, but it, it's that, because it, it speaks about a ringing cry. When something good happens, you, you celebrate, you shout out loud. And so when it says God will rejoice over you with joyful songs, it literally means God will spin around you with whoops of joy. Can you imagine God doing that? But that's the promise. And the promise is made not to people who've got it all right, but to people who've got it all wrong. God will still spin around you with whoops of joy because God loves you no matter what you've done. God is not some Santa Claus who, who rewards you for good behavior and punishes you for bad behavior. God loves us. God delights in us with gladness and spins over us with whoops of joy. God does not wait for us to get our act together. We're told that it was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us, to demonstrate God's love for us. God doesn't wait for us to get it all right before God loves us and gives us all that is necessary to make our lives right. This time of the year especially we remember that God is with us. Christ is born not in some palace to the rich and the powerful. People have got it all together or seem to have it all together, but really don't. But Christ is born in the mess and muck of ordinary, everyday life. Life that you and I may not even have to experience. Life of real suffering. Christ is referred to as the suffering servant. He will experience the most awful betrayal by those closest to him. He will experience the, the pain of, of crucifixion. And, and all of that is, is the promise that God is with us, no matter what the circumstances of life. If God is for us, who can be against us? Rejoice. God is near and God loves you. May this give us peace. May it change the way we live, the way we look at ourselves and the way that we look at others. May we show God's love to all. Let's pray. We've had our eyes open enough, Lord God, to be reminded by the news and to have noticed in ourselves that there's a mountain of stuff that needs fixing. And we know that you are concerned too. And that you call on us to join you in your loving concern for us and for our world. The echo of the Baptist's cry still finds its target. The brood of vipers who manipulate desperate refugees for their political gain. 
the axe at the root of the fossil fuel industry for choking our planet, all the places we need to repent in our own practices. Please, God, help us to actions that bear good fruit for all in our sick, sorry, and nervous world. And so we pray for our church, for a renewed vision and a lively, open compassion that we can put our faith into more than words, more than vague hopes and fine committees. Help your church bear worthy fruit. And we pray for our community, for a widespread opening of ears and hearts to each other, that we might get beyond our complacency and beyond the polarities of placards to a better depth of understanding, a greater tolerance, and a deeper respect born out of the one who came to bring peace to all. For our leaders, give wisdom and restrict the supply chain of venom. Quieten the cries of division. Silence the voices of prejudice and hate. Enable innovations that heal. Empower those who bring us together and encourage whatever helps to bring reconciliation. We pray for the people around us, those who bear a hard burden or a pain, and in a moment of silence, we lift them to you by name. We think especially at this time of those affected by those horrific tornadoes in the USA. The devastation is just beyond anything we could ever imagine. And the, the people who've lost their lives, who've lost everything. And so, Lord, in your mercy, we pray that you would hear our prayer and that you would bring restoration and healing to them. Hear us and use our prayers so that your will may be done here as it is in heaven. Loving God, our prayers continue on. We ask and listen and act through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who gave us these words to pray together. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As I thought about what song to close with, there was, there was only one, well, there were two songs, really. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. But I thought, that's better at, on Christmas Day. The other one was the Ode to Joy, by Ludwig van Beethoven. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. And so we're gonna to listen to joyful, joyful, we adore thee. And you might want to sing along with it behind your masks if you'd like.
And so as we prepare to go from this place, we are reminded that our lives are meant as a sacrifice to God, not just on a Sunday, but 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year round. God invites us to work with God for good in all things. And so we offer our gifts as we leave or uh, buy EFTs or plan giving envelopes or however we make our gifts available as a sign and a token of our whole lives given to God in an act of worship. And so let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we bring the gift of our lives to you and the gifts that we offer as we leave or in various ways that we do now. Take our lives and let them be consecrated to you and your work in the world. Take our gifts and use them as a means of hope to those who hunger and thirst. Help our lips to praise you. Help our hands to serve you. Help our hearts to love you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we stand as we share the benediction with one another. Um, and I invite you to say the words to those around you without getting too close, of course, um, but just speaking these words of blessing to one another. And so now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace and may God's peace go with you.